Please, Lord Jesus Christ, we call upon the anointing today. We call upon the angels of heaven to surround this room. I call warring angels in here with mighty swords of flaming fire in Jesus' mighty name. I call the blood of Jesus upon every person here today in Jesus' mighty name. I step aside, Lord, and move to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and have you preach me preach what you say and not what I say. Let Graham Healy step aside and the anointing of the Holy Spirit speak forth in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And an amen, amen to that. Amen. 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 I hear an amen and an amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I hear hallelujah. We must stir ourselves up in the Holy Ghost. You know, amen. Hallelujah. Today, what I'm going to speak to you about is what does it mean to be born again? What does it mean to be born again? It's a big word, being born again. And a lot of the church, unfortunately, is not applying the authority that they have being born again. And I'll just clear a little point here to start with. You know, we're a tripart being. We have a spirit. We have a soul, which is the mind, the intellect, and the emotions. And we have flesh, which is the five senses. Sight, hearing, smell, touch, and taste. Now, God speaks to us spirit to spirit. The book of Romans say that the carnal mind is an enemy of God's. And what that means, of course, is all the intellectual people who try and discount the Bible as some storybook, they can't understand it because their mind is not renewed. They haven't got the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They haven't got the Rema, or what I call the Holy Spirit highlight pen that puts things through your Bible to say that is applying to you today, that is applying to you, that is applying to you in Jesus' mighty name. So when you go to 2 Corinthians uh, 7 2, don't have to go there, but um, I'm just giving an example. I'm sorry, I'll just back off there a little bit. I'm jumping ahead of myself as usual. That's my mentality ahead at 100 miles an hour. The Holy Spirit slowed me down a little bit. Your flesh is the problem. The enemy out there speaks through your mind and rises up the flesh. Correct? Oh, it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to all of you. Yeah. The enemy comes in like a flood into your mind and if the mind is unrenewed, i.e. it is not filtered through the Word of God, the enemy will get your flesh to react. And when your flesh reacts, it overcomes the power of your spirit, which goes underneath. The spirit should be on top. Amen? Hallelujah. So, just get a very, I want this very clear in your mind that we have three parts to our makeup. Spirit, soul, which is mind, intellect, and emotions. And body, which is the five senses. Amen? Now, the fact is, when you search the Scriptures thoroughly and look through them very carefully and study them diligently, not just on Sunday. Sunday is great, but that's, as Laurel said, that's why myself and Pastor Chad are doing a practical Scripture study on Wednesdays at Rob's place. So you've got some armour against the enemy. Because... The, the fact is that the human spirit does never die. When the flesh dies, the human spirit goes somewhere. Amen? Amen? That's what the scriptures say. The human spirit goes somewhere and it either goes to point A or point B. Point A is with the Lord if you're born again. Point B is to the prince of the power of the air who's running this world apart from the born again Christians which is 
terrible term. I hate to say this, but it's Satan. Now, if you get on the internet and you have a look around at the world today, especially the Middle East, uh, it's not a happy place. Who's in control of that? God? Think about that. Is God in control of all that war and devastation and terrorism? And uh, is God in control of the economy of the world at the moment where 1% of the rich people are making all the money, they're printing themselves and the, the other 98% are getting nothing? Is God doing that? Think about it. I don't think so. There's two areas in the spiritual realm that we must consider very, very seriously. One is the kingdom of darkness and one is the kingdom of light. There isn't any grey area. I'd like to say there is, but there isn't. There's point A or point B. The kingdom of darkness is controlled by Satan, as you know, with the prince of the power of the air, the principalities and powers and all that sort of thing. And it's a real world. I've experienced it personally. Those people who... Now, now I've never taken drugs for depression or anything like that, but I'm telling you that I've been through some pretty serious stuff which I won't go into today. And I've seen the black hordes. I've seen them. I've fought against them in the spirit. One of my uh, mentors, some of you may know him, he's now born to be with the Lord, is uh, Keith Loy. Remember the great Keith Loy, a Pentecostal preacher from Calvary Temple in Townsville, was my mentor for two years. And during that time, I was going through a lot of personal stuff and I was fighting against the forces of darkness, literally. Every night this black cloud would come to me and try and do me no good. Now, since I experienced that and got through it, by the scriptures, by the way, by a real heavy spiritual warfare, fighting with the word, not in a theological way. I'm not a theological person. I'm a practical person. If it doesn't work, I won't do it. If you can't show me how it works from a practical point of view, there's no way you'll convince me to do it. So, therefore, in scriptures and in the spirit, I've been mentored by great men and women of God who actually can walk the walk and talk the talk. Because just like Pastor Chad, I'll bring his name up here right here. That's why I'm here. Because he's walking the walk and talking the talk. Amen? Amen. He's not reading prepared scripture uh, uh, sermons out of a book somewhere. He's actually going by revelation of the Holy Ghost. So when Pastor Chad turns up and hopefully I'm doing the same thing, it will minister your spirit. It's what you need for this particular day. Now when I meditated on this, what is it to be born again? I mean, that's the whole New Testament, by the way. And I don't know why the Lord gives me these great grand subjects to go on because I'm studying for a week to get to 20 minutes in a sermon. But I think it's important because we do not understand the transfer of power that happens when you're born again. Now keep that in mind, spirit, soul and body, that's what you're dealing with. The enemy will come to your mind and he'll try all sorts of things. He'll try and get you drinking again, he'll try and get you on drugs, he'll try and get you swearing, he'll try and get you doing things. He'll try and say, yep, yeah, that's okay. And then what he'll do, this is the enemy, Satan and his cohorts, what he'll do, he'll bind you somewhere. He'll say, he'll get something on you. And then you're trapped, you're locked. You say, oh, well, I did that. Uh, well, I can't go to church. Or, oh, I've got to, I'm stuck. And then he'll put another one on you, another one, another one, another one. And eventually you'll get to the point where you're bound in slavery to sin. Now, you want to do a full study on that, but read the full book of Romans because... The Holy Ghost said to me before I came here to make certain that I speak about the Apostle Paul. Now, that's a big speak. But you know what? Before the Apostle Paul met the Lord on the road to Damascus, he was controlled by Satan. And you know what? He knew the Scriptures, the Old Testament. He knew it back to front. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. 
He was acting on behalf of the religious leaders of the time to bind Christians and murder them. Murder them. The first martyr, Stephen, who do you think they threw their cloaks at the feet of while they murdered him? The apostle. It was actually Saul at the time, but that was his name before conversion. And he thought that he was doing the right thing. He was acting on written <laughs> orders from the head priest. That's an interesting fact, isn't it? Uh, has it to say, you know, we have some battle commanders in our midst here that we've been through the religious stuff of control and blind, it's not blind faith, it's actually blindly following the enemy, actually, because the Holy Spirit doesn't force you to do anything. The Holy Spirit is a, a in my experience, the Holy Spirit's like a real good mate. 